It is late afternoon coffee time here in Umpang. I'm sitting outside my room at the guest house, and I thought while I enjoy my coffee, I would reply to some of your comments. To be honest, I don't know if there are a lot of comments here that need replying to. I haven't read them the last couple of days. I haven't had uh, Wi-Fi here at the guest house, so I haven't been uh, online very much. And um, I haven't curated them in any way. So I'm just going to go through, I guess, the last three videos that I posted since I came down here. There was one called uh, Morning Scene in Umpang. It was like a five-minute video of a pond uh, right here. And then the road trip video about my scooter ride from Mesot to here. And then I posted a 30-minute video of the same pond. It's right across the road from my guest house. But the 30-minute video is when it was raining. I was sitting inside my guest house room and the rain started to come down. And I thought, oh, that will look really cool on the pond. So I quickly put my GoPro together and I ran out to catch some footage of the pond while it was raining. And of course, by the time I got out there, the rain was kind of... Uh, stopping already but I got a few minutes of the rain at the beginning and then it kind of petered off and then the sun came out and I ended up uploading 30 minutes of that video. So I'm going to look at the comments to those three videos and uh, reply to the uh, yeah to your comments. <laughs> the last little while I've broken all of my reading glasses so I had to go back to 7-Eleven where I get all my reading glasses and grab some new ones and uh, there wasn't a lot of selection. Basically, there was only one type that they had in stock. All the others were uh, out of stock or whatever. So uh, <laughs> this is what I ended up with for my reading glasses now. I like the blue. Why not have a bit of color in your life? So starting with Morning Scene in Umpong, this five-minute uh, video I shot in 5K, and it was a little bit of an experimental video because I find I'm often riding by interesting scene, like scenery, and I think, wow, I should take some video of that, but what would I do with that video? You know, if it isn't part of a vlog, what am I going to do with it? But anyway, I just started this habit recently of taking video with ambient sound, you know, without me talking in any way, just a, you know, a 20 minute video, 30 minute video, five minute video of something to do in the scenery here in uh, Mesa, in uh, Umpang, and then uploading it to YouTube. And uh, yeah, just uh, doing that for fun, kind of keeping a record of some of the things that I'm seeing. And uh, so comment number one from Danielle Boucher. He says, I wish I was there, so serene. Yeah, it was very uh, serene. It still is. I can see the pond uh, <laughs> from where I'm sitting. It's just across the road there. Uh, Umpang is an interesting town that way because it is a town. Streets and businesses and 7-Elevens and traffic. But it's quite a small place nestled right in the middle of all these hills surrounding us. And you have a feeling a little bit of being in a village. And this guest house, the Umpang house, is right on the edge of town. And basically, if I cross the road, I'm, I'm in countryside. And that's where that uh, pond is uh, sitting right over there. I noticed it when I was walking out of the guest house and I thought, wow, that's a nice looking kind of a Walden Pond uh, situation. And I made a mental note of it. And then when I was uh, thinking of filming things um, around town with my GoPro, the first thing I thought of was that pond. Yeah, very serene right there. Though there is a road right behind it. And in the whole video, because this video was originally about 30 minutes long, I couldn't upload all 30 minutes because I couldn't edit it. It turns out that shooting in 5K on a GoPro, which I'd never done before, causes two problems. One, the GoPro overheats and shuts down because 5K really heats up the uh, processor. And then when I tried to edit the video with my video editing uh, software, it won't accept 5K video. That, that's outside the limits. Uh, 4K is the maximum. So even though I had 30 minutes of video, it was divided into six 
five minute chunks and I couldn't load those chunks into the video editing program and put them together because the program wouldn't accept 5K. So I just uploaded one segment, one five minute segment of the overall video. And in the other sections of the video, there was a fair amount of traffic going back and forth on that road behind the pond. So there was a garbage truck at one time stopping to pick up a whole bunch of garbage and doing other things and delivery trucks and farmers trucks and tractors and people on scooters, you know, zipping by all the time in the background. So it is quite serene, but then you get to motor sounds as well. And interestingly enough, there is a house right beside the pond. So the camera was facing in this direction, right behind the camera was a house. And there are windows in the house and you could actually hear the people inside um, talking and doing things in the house. And some of that sound was uh, picked up on the microphone as well. So it was the ambient, true ambient sound of nature, traffic and uh, the family, you know, living in the house uh, beside the pond. Roderick J. McDonald says, great composition. Thank you, Roderick. Yeah, it actually looks nice. I, I, I thought about it for a while. I went, I don't really have the right equipment for this kind of thing. I don't have big um, tripods. So all I can do is pretty much put the GoPro right on the ground with a very short tabletop tripod. That's all I have. But of course I had to be very careful looking for a spot where I could get a nice view of the pond and put the GoPro down on the ground safely because it's all, you know, rocky and on an angle and I don't want the GoPro falling over <laughs> and falling into the water or something like that. So I had a fair amount of work, you know, rummaging around that pond and working my way through the, uh, the bushes to try and put my camera in the right spot and have it close enough to me that if it did start to fall over, I could quickly grab it, you know, and save it. So uh, finding the right place to put the GoPro wasn't easy. Andy Phillips asks the question, Hi, how was the road from Mesot to Umpang? I'm planning to ride it in my motorbike. Looks pretty amazing on Google Maps. So the very next video I posted is a bit of a, it's a 30 minute uh, vlog of my journey from Mesot to here. I didn't show much of the road this time. I just stopped here and there when there was some nice scenery and I you know, shot a bit of the scenery with my GoPro and talked a little bit. So I didn't really film a lot of the road, but you can see some of the road in that video, the very next one, my road trip video. But while I was riding, I had a second GoPro mounted on the front of the scooter and it shot a time-lapse of the whole trip, right from my guest house in Mesot all the way to this guest house in Impong, Umpong. And I had it shooting five times time-lapse from Mesot to the hills and then I slowed it down to two times as for the entire journey through the hills. So I basically have a video record of every meter, every kilometer, every second of that journey door to door. I record it as a time-lapse and I'm actually working on that video right now. It has no narration at all. It's just uh, right now, <laughs> crazily enough, I cut out the Mesot to the Hills part because the video was so long. All I wanted to show was the beautiful um, hilly highway part. They call that the uh, Sky Highway, has a tourist name, Sky Highway, and it has 1,219 curves. So it's a very windy, curvy road. So I'm only going to post the time lapse of that section and it's at two times speed. So the ride from beginning to end, I believe was nearly three hours, over three hours actually. And at two times speed, it cuts it in half. So the time lapse is actually an hour and 45 minutes long. And I'm busy right now just um, putting that together and then putting music over top of the, uh, the video of me just winding through the road. I kind of did that with an older video, a lot of time-lapse time lapse segments, but that was shot at something like 10 times speed. So it was just like, you know, zoom, 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 you know, like, like the flash going through the corners at two times. 
you get a much more stately progression through the curves so it won't make people dizzy. And the idea with a video like that, at least my idea, is that you don't sit down and watch an hour and 45 minute video of someone else riding their scooter. It's just something I did for fun. And since I have the video, I figure I might as well upload it anyway. Someone might be able to watch some of it and enjoy a little bit of the scenery. And I thought, you know, you, if you had a nice big you know, flat screen TV, you could run this video on the TV with the music playing or just turn the volume down and have no sound at all and just have this playing in your living room as sort of a scenic vista passing by. You know, I've seen videos where people take, you know, an hour of a fireplace, just a burning fire, and then they loop it and you basically put that on your television and it's like you have a beautiful fire burning in your living room, you know. So that was my idea with this video, just to capture some interesting scenery and then someone can just play it in the background in their home or wherever they are and just let it run in the background. They can go about their apartment doing their dishes, cooking dinner, and every few minutes they can look at the screen if they want to and, oh, look at that. You know, there's, there's a <laughs> little scene from uh, Planet Doug, you know, winding his way, you know, around the corners. So that will be uh, coming up in a few days. It takes a long time to load an hour and 45 minutes worth of music. So it's a bit of a long project. And here the uh, Wi-Fi keeps cutting out. So without Wi-Fi, I can't get new music. So this is turning into a very drawn out sort of uh, project. <laughs> but you will be able to see the entire journey. So uh, if you want to see what this road looks like, you're gonna get your wish to the tune of nearly two hours worth of uh, video. Next comment, uh, my old friend DNA Orion, he says, I see you learned how to play the GoPro 9, LOL. I'm not quite sure what that comment means, um, maybe because it's in 5K, and one of the key features of the GoPro Hero 9 Black is that it has not only 4K video, it actually produces 5K which is very high resolution, especially for a camera that small. So maybe that's what he means. I'm, I'm learning about the new features of the GoPro 9 uh, after uh, months and months of already owning it. But as I said, 5K, even 4K is next to useless for me because the video size is just way too big. It takes too much time to copy those files and then to edit it. And then the final file that you upload to YouTube can be 20, even 30 gigabytes in size. I mean, these files are massive. So uh, yeah, even 4K is a real stretch for me. And then going up to 5K, as I, as I already talked about, completely melted down my whole system. So 5K really isn't an option uh, for me right now. <laughs> I will get you there, says Umfang, with a, uh, a heart with a bow around it. So I will get you there, likes uh, Umfang. So do I. It's a really nice town. My friend uh, from Taiwan, Taiwan Terry Rides the Rails. That's the new name of his uh, YouTube channel. It used to be just Taiwan Terry, but now we have uh, Taiwan Terry Rides the Rails. He, uh, he makes videos for uh, YouTube. And actually, he's been experimenting with the same thing that I've started doing, where he's been shooting video of the uh, MRT system in Taichung, Taiwan, where he just lets the camera run and he films station by station the entire MRT system. One station and one length of video per, one length of MRT per video. And he's going to document the entire MRT system and then the train system and perhaps all the other, and the high-speed rail train system. Basically anything running on rails in Taiwan. But he shot those videos without any narration at all, similar to what I've been doing where I just film a pond or a rainstorm or a river and I don't add any narration at all. Kind of a National Geographic approach for me, uh, urban geographic uh, for Terry. But he writes, 
The brown hanging leaves in the foreground, the gentle ripples of the surface water behind, the sounds of birds all around really makes this an immersive experience. Imagining if you shot this in 360 for a VR. So Terry, he's, he's thinking like a filmmaker because he makes a, he shoots his own video. And so he's looking at my video with a, uh, the, the eye of a professional, you know, sort of like, wow, okay, I can see what I like about that uh, video. But yeah, it turned out really nice. I, uh, I liked it. Um, I kept hoping for something dramatic to happen, like a goose or a duck or some kind of water bird to fly in and land on the pond while I'm filming it, or a giant turtle, snapping turtle to emerge, something big to happen, but nothing did. I saw some ripples where some big fish were in the pond, um, birds were flying around. You could hear a lot of the birds, which was nice, but uh, nothing too terribly dramatic happened while I was shooting the pond. But yeah, it was really a, I, I ended up really liking the video. Speaking of birds, Jamie Parker writes, I wish I could identify the bird species. Any suggestions from people? I can't help you out. I don't know what the names of those birds were. While I was, I mean, the whole time the camera was filming, I was out there for probably three hours in total, just sitting beside the pond. And on a field next to the pond, there was actually, I don't know, 50 birds in, in total from all the different trees flying down and looking for worms and bugs on the ground. And then they fly up again. And there's a lot of bird song coming from that field. And I was thinking I should move the camera over there early in the morning just to film the birds. But I don't know if that would work with a GoPro because you get such a wide field of view. The birds would just end up like tiny little things. You wouldn't really be able to see very much of them. But you could hear them, you know, hear all the bird song. Halim Docks asks a question. Uh, 5K, like frames per second? Because I put... 5k in the title there's no reason to do that except for anyone into the technology to tell them that oh this video is available in 5k resolution but he was wondering if that meant frames per second no so 5k refers to the resolution of the image so uh, how many pixels wide and how many pixels tall it is and uh, this is very high resolution, 5K, and then it goes down to 4K, then um, uh, quad HD, and then full HD, and full HD is 1080p. And most of my videos are shot in 1080p because all of my equipment can handle 1080p um, relatively easily. Um, and it still looks pretty good, I think, 1080p. 4K looks better. But as I said, it's a challenging resolution and 5K had defeated me entirely. Because frames per second would be more like 30 frames per second or 60. Or if you're in a PAL country, it would be 25 frames per second or 50 frames per second. You know, something like that. Much lower numbers than uh, 5,000. Last comment for this video from Qin Ji Shang Mo. Your videos help me to improve my English. It's a beautiful and amazing view for my viewing. Thanks to Planet Doug for making this type of video. Oh, you're welcome. I've gotten a few comments since I started making videos that my YouTube videos have been helpful for people studying English. I used to teach English and I've had a long work history as an English editor and writer and I do voice recording in studios. So I've sort of developed the habit of speaking a bit slower than normal. My, my diction is pretty clear, I think, and pretty slow. So for a student of English, I guess uh, I'm relatively easy to understand. I think Canadians in general, we speak a bit more clearly, I think, than Americans do, just in a general sense. Um, I've noticed that. Uh, schools that I've taught at where, you know, in Korea or Taiwan, there would often be American teachers and Canadian teachers, and I could really see the difference where the Americans were speaking very fast and the Canadians tended to speak more slowly and then enunciate a little bit more clearly. Maybe they were doing that because they thought their students could understand them better. 
don't really know. But, all right. So that's it for uh, the comments on the morning scene in Umfang, Umpang video. Next one, this is the uh, scooter ride to Umpang. Uh, says road trip on the, uh, on the thumbnail, you know, right there, it says road trip. And as I said, I haven't looked at any of these uh, comments at all, so I don't know what I'm in for here. Let's start with the very first ones. Oh, there's um, Chin Ji Shang Mo again. Your videos help me to learn English. Thanks for making videos. You're very welcome. Andy Tan, I believe Andy is writing from Malaysia. He writes, most of us are under lockdown as well. Only takeaway. Enjoy your videos about uh, Mesod. Uh, oh, enjoy your rides. Maybe share with us some tech videos of your trip. Be positive. Won't be long before the shops and countries are open again. And I think Andy, he's responding. He's responding to a section at the beginning of my video where I was talking about how the almost never-ending rain and the never-ending shutdowns and travel restrictions was kind of weighing me down a little bit. You know, it's just been, it's been going on for a year and a half now. And this was the year, of course, where everything was supposed to get better. Everything was supposed to start opening up. And of course, it didn't turn out that way. And in fact, this part of the world is shutting down more. So we're probably, you know, we could be looking at another year before countries are open at all to, for random tourists like me, you know, to hop from country to country. Maybe we'll never be able to do it again. Like who knows what's gonna happen when the dust settles on all of this. Anyway, he's telling me to uh, <laughs> hang in there and uh, stay positive. But yeah, I mean, coming here to Umpang was a very good decision. Uh, my mood is just so much better now that I'm here. Just being on the road, going for a little journey, change of scenery, you know, just kind of wakes you up, gets you uh, engaged with the world again. And he uh, also asks for uh, tech videos. And I've sort of, um, haven't done a whole lot of tech videos lately. Um, I certainly could because the technical challenges I face never end. Always thinking about it, always dealing with something. Um, but I was pondering a while back, like making a separate YouTube channel, and I was a technology channel, and then I was gonna reserve any technology videos for that channel. I haven't created that channel, so I've sort of been holding off on all of my technology obsessions, thinking that, okay, someday, when I make that technology channel, then I can start posting those videos there. I just haven't uh, gotten around to it. I will get you there. Happy to see you smiling and riding. I understand you have been stuck in a rut. Enjoy your outing and hopefully you can find some nice food places and such and safe travels. Cheers, mate. Wishing you can get a shot of good vaccine soon. Yeah, I was really happy on that ride as I, I stopped at one point uh, looking at some beautiful scenery and uh, I swear as I was riding along, um, you know, I was just hooting and hollering. Yeah, I was just in such a good mood as I was riding the scooter. I didn't have any music playing on earbuds or anything like that, didn't need it. Just being out in the world again was, uh, was like having music playing in my head. It was really great. Um, yeah, he says, I hope you can find some nice food places. It's not good here in Umpang. Um, yeah, everything is closed. I've been feeding myself by um, just going along the streets. They have little places out on this, like uh, food stalls. You can pick up some noodles here and some rice there and fried chicken there and some finger food, things like that. But uh, n none of the restaurants are open. I mean, I, I can't go into a restaurant and sit down and enjoy a good meal and film it or anything like that. That's just not gonna happen on this trip. Nothing's open. Oh, Sam S. This is a long one. I won't read all of it out loud. I'll start with the first paragraph. Sam S writes, 
you, re you should really try and get the COVID vaccine by any means, free or paid. At this stage, being unvaccinated is putting yourself at very serious risk. I'd scour the whole place and get vaccinated. I'll read the rest of that on my own later, but it looks like there's a lot more in the same vein of encouraging me to do anything I can to uh, get vaccinated here, including, he says, traveling to Bangkok or Chiang Mai if necessary. He basically is saying scour the whole country looking for a vaccine. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I start, I open the video talking about uh, my vaccine adventures in Mesot, where my landlady told me about a vaccination clinic that was for foreigners. Um, I went to check the place out and there was nobody there. It was supposed to be happening at a temple, but the temple was completely closed. The gates were locked and closed. There were two monks sitting at a table at a smaller opening, but the table was blocking that small gate and the monks were sitting at the table and I went up to talk to them and uh, they basically said, no, there's nothing like that going on here. You know, we really don't know what you're talking about. So I don't know where my landlady got that information. And after I went there, then I went to a hospital in Mesot where I'm told that um, you can get a vaccine privately. You just pay for it because my situation is I'm a tourist. I'm still on a tourist visa and all whatever government programs are being offered, they are all for permanent residence. So you have to have a work visa or a student visa or a retirement visa. It's meant for foreigners who are living permanently in Thailand. And I've been here long enough, you know, I pretty much live here at the moment, but I'm still technically a tourist and those government programs aren't open to me. So I have to find a private clinic. And at the moment, none of them have access to any vaccines. They're still waiting for them to be shipped to Thailand. Different hospitals, I guess, have deals where they've already reserved X number doses of Moderna or Pfizer or whatever arrangement they can make. And they're just waiting for them to uh, show up in Thailand. And as far as I know, um, there's no schedule for any of this. And in terms of what Sam S recommends, like going to Chiang Mai or going to Bangkok, as far as I know, I can't anyway. Um, you can't really leave Tak province because of the uh, travel restrictions anyway. Um, I mean, you could say go to Chiang Mai province, but it would involve getting, you know, negative, COVID negative tests, um, bringing all your paperwork. And I think you have to have permission from some government office in Mesot to let you leave the province, show those papers at the provincial board boundary. And then you have to go into two week quarantine in Chiang Mai. And even then there'd be no, certainly no guarantee that there would be any vaccines available there. Um, definitely not for a tourist like me. So it's not much I can do except wait until the private clinics get doses of Moderna or Pfizer, and then I can pay for them and then get them that way. And hopefully that happens sooner rather than later. Ah, <laughs> one of our friendly uh, internet types, DC. I don't think I've seen a comment from this person before, so he must be kind of a, a newcomer to my challenge. He says, nowhere open outside a 7-Eleven. Are you stupid? But there's no punctuation or question mark, so I'm not quite sure how he uh, intends this. <laughs> Actually, DC, he wasn't happy with just one. Then he led, left another one. Just go home. Thailand is closed. So uh, I don't know what to do with that comment. <laughs> no, yeah, sort of his two comments kind of contradict each other. Because I here in Umpang, 7-Eleven is open, but all the restaurants basically are closed. You might be able to get takeaway in different places. So then he says, are you stupid that I think everything is closed? and I'm wrong, but then he says, you should go home because all of Thailand is closed. So uh, DC can't make up his mind about what he's trying to say. Uh, Muhammad Zahid Zanul Abidin, he writes, 
Hi, do you do the scooter maintenance? New engine oil, new air filter, new spark plug, tire pressure, etc. It's very important for your road trips. Stay hey, stay safe, and stay happy. Uh, nice warm comment after a DC's <laughs> stupid comment. Um, yeah, good question, actually. My scooter is a rental, so I've rented it from someone in Mesot, and uh, I know this man quite well. Uh, or fairly well by this point, and he does regular maintenance on his scooters, and um, I'm renting month by month from him, and after a certain amount of time, he takes the scooter from me, keeps it for a day or so, brings it into the shop, and the whole thing gets overhauled and tuned up, and they check everything over. So he takes care of that, because I'm paying the rental fee, and then he's taking care of the uh, maintenance of the scooter. I'm not doing that myself because, yeah, I, I don't own the scooter. But yeah, everything is in uh, good condition as far as, uh, as far as I know. I make sure the tires are pumped up uh, nicely inflated before I head off on any one of these trips. Because I have noticed the, the tires lose pressure fairly quickly and can go soft. So I've been very careful to, before I leave uh, Mesod, I'll bring it into a shop and they pump it up and get the, the tire pressure uh, right. Yeah, should be, I think everything is fine on the scooter. Everything's uh, well maintained. Ah, another comment from uh, Taiwan Terry, Rides the Rails. He writes, love the time-lapse unpacking segment. So thank you, Terry. Um, yeah, he's referring to a piece at the very end of this video. I stuck it on at the very end where I just put the GoPro up in a corner of the room and put it on a time lapse. And then I was just unpacking. Um, as soon as I arrive at a new place, or even every time I go back to my room in Mesot, the first thing I do is unpack all the electronics, plug in all the battery chargers, and then all the batteries from, you know, I have two GoPros, the Panasonic camera. I take out all the batteries from those cameras, plug them into the chargers, and then, um, plug in the, uh, the microphone to charge up the battery in the microphone. And then I'll go through all the memory cards from all the different cameras and copy all the video to my, uh, to my various devices, to the laptop or to my phone. So it's a whole technology unpacking. Um, and to be honest, when I unpacked here, it was a little bit chaotic because I'm just, not, I'm just out of practice because I have not been traveling hardly at all in my time here in Mesot. So whenever I'm faced with having to pack up all of my camera gear and everything else, and even come here for a week or so, it's a, it's, it's a challenge. I'm like, how do I do this again? Like, what, what do I bring? What do I need? I mean, it's a major endeavor. And uh, I don't have my systems worked out as efficiently as I normally do. So when I was unpacking here, I was like rummaging through my bag. I was like, what, 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 where is everything? Just sort of like, what's this and what's this and where is this? And yeah, it was a bit of an effort, but uh, I kind of knew that would happen, which is why I set up the time lapse. I thought it would be quite amusing to see me, you know, running around the room, plugging everything in and then tracking everything down. Time lapse. I love a good time lapse. I really do. <clears throat> and, uh, ooh. I should know how to pronounce this name. He's a, a regular commenter from before, but Thet Tike, Tyke, Thet Tyke. He writes, come back to Canada and get your vaccine shots. There are walk-in clinics everywhere. No appointments needed. Yeah, well, I mean, the thought has crossed my mind. Um, it's kind of weird now, the way the world has been divided kind of into the haves and the have-nots in terms of vaccine availability because you read the news from the United States and Canada and what he writes seems to be true that you can get a vaccine anywhere now, just about. If you're not picky about which one you get, you know, they're avail available at pharmacies and walk-in clinics and everywhere you can think of. But yeah, I mean, going back to Canada is not really an option just to get vaccinated because I can't even get to Bangkok very easily. And then to arrange a flight to Canada and arriving in Canada unvaccinated is a problem now. The rule is you have to be vaccinated 
as far as I understand things, to even get into Canada. As a citizen, I'm sure I would be allowed in, but of course I would have to go into the standard isolation and quarantine systems, and I'm not sure how long that would uh, extend. Mm, perhaps they're issuing vaccines at the airport? I have no idea, you know, for new arrivals, returning Canadian citizens. But to be honest, I really don't want to go through that hassle. The only way I would fly back to Canada is if I was already fully vaccinated. I do not want the hassle of trying to travel from here to Bangkok, let alone from here to Bangkok, and then all the way back to Canada, going through multiple airports and being unvaccinated the entire time. I, uh, I don't, uh, that's not something I think would be very pleasant to do. So basically, I think I'm stuck here until I can uh, track down a vaccine and then uh, I'd be able to go back to Canada. Michael Thu writes, how is going your day, Uncle Doug? Safely drive. Um, which day? I'm not sure. But uh, let's talk about today, you know, since today is today. Yeah, I had a good day today. Bit of an odd one because I've sort of gotten so interested in this little project of filming scenes of nature that uh, this morning I hopped on my scooter and I was going to go riding out into the countryside. But then I ran into a foreigner. And uh, he's from uh, Switzerland. Uh, really, actually kind of an amusing story. I I'll, I'll guess I'll, I'll try to tell it briefly. Where I saw this foreigner driving a truck. He saw me at the side of the road. I was getting out my GoPros to film like a waterfall. And we waved at each other. He pulled over and then we went to get a cup of coffee. Just to have a, a quick chat. So uh, there's a place here that gives, uh, that sells takeaway coffee. So we went there, grabbed a coffee, and then for a while we just sort of stood um, by his truck out in the parking lot. You know, we're chatting for a little while. And the funny thing is, he knew everything about me. You know, he says, hey, I know how old you are. I know what your name is. I know where you live in Mesod. I know what you're doing in Umpang. I know how long you're going to be here. And I never met this guy before in my life. You know, just a young friendly guy from Switzerland and he says how in the world do you know all of that and he says hey it's a small town you know he knows the people at the health screening checkpoint and my arrival as a you know foreign tourist this white guy showing up in Umpang was kind of a big event so everyone at the health screening point you know noticed me and paid attention to me and learned everything about me and all this information about me who I am why I'm in Umpang, all of this information just sort of like whoosh, filtered out into the community. And then this uh, man from Switzerland, yeah, he knows one of the women from the checkpoint and she knew all about me and then he knew all about me. So I'm famous in uh, Umpang, even though I've only been here uh, two or three days. Yeah, it's kind of funny. But I spent so much time chatting with him that it was kind of too late for me to hop on my scooter and then go riding through the countryside on a long trip as I planned. So all I did was go in the opposite direction where I knew the highway goes over a river. And then I went down, I parked my scooter and then went down to the river and I set up all of my cameras to capture footage of just the flowing rapids. There's a spot where the water goes over some rocks and you know, there's a lot of rapids and a lot of water sound. And again, just as a, an experiment, my, new, my newfound obsession for shooting vistas. So now I'm thinking about yet another YouTube channel calling it uh, something like Planet Doug Vistas. And that channel would be nothing but hour long shots of scenery, rivers and mountains and birds and fish, anything beautiful that I see, just set up a camera shoot an hour of it, ambient uh, audio, you know, no narration or anything like that, and uh, just post it to uh, Planet Doug Vistas, you know, people can uh, find a whole bunch of videos there of waterfalls or rivers or whatever. Anyway, another one of my uh, crazy ideas for uh, YouTube, which I'll never have enough time to actually do follow through on. But anyway, I spent probably three hours down by this river filming uh, the flow of the water 
And then when that was done, uh, came back here and that's been my day. Been a good day. Kitten as Trophy writes, my favorite eating place, actually the only one I've tried is, there's the name in Thai, and in English, Ran An Por Kua, Chef's Place Restaurant, just further from the local PEA office. Um, then he gives the coordinates uh, on Google Maps. This place has the tastiest Thai street food for me, better than the average shops in Bangkok. I hope it is still open for uh, take home. Okay, now I know the limitation in uh, Umpang. Yeah, Kitten as Trophy is referring back to a previous comment where I think he wrote something about um, hoping that I could still go see the Tilor Su waterfall because on my last trip here, I didn't go to see the famous waterfall. I think it might have been closed back then and I'm pretty sure it's closed now. So I, I don't think it's even possible to go to the waterfall. I could be wrong about that, I don't know. But anyway, in our comments, chatting back and forth, we were talking about what you can do in Umpang now, what you can't do, you know, what's closed and what's open. So who knows, maybe it's not nearly as shut down as I think it is, but everywhere I look, everything seems to be yeah, largely uh, shut down. Yeah, pretty much uh, closed. Beyond Horizon writes, could be bleach they are using as disinfectant, careful, and clean with water for your belongings. So this is in reference to the um, little disinfectant station. When you come into town now, they have a tent set up with nozzles spraying a disinfectant. And then if you're walking, you walk through that tunnel. And if you're riding a scooter, you're expected to ride your scooter into the tunnel, stop in the middle, let the sprays hit you. There's a woman controlling them. And then she asks you to stay there for a certain number of seconds. And then she says, okay. And then you, you drive the rest of the way out. So it's sort of, yeah, disinfectant for the scooter, your, your you and your bags, you know, everything attached to you. Obviously, whether it is effective or necessary or not, I don't know. I will leave that to the uh, doctors and scientists and local authorities to decide one way or the other. But um, Beyond Horizon was basically recommending, you know, be careful. Who knows what they're spraying you with? And he's suggesting that afterwards I, you know, wipe down everything with water to get rid of this spray, whatever it is. But... Um, to be honest, I don't know how you can do that because every time I go out that way, I go past it, like leaving Mesot, and then when I come back in, I have to go through the tunnel again. So it's not like you do it when you arrive in the town. You do it every single time. I go past this thing and I go past it again. I don't have to register in the, in the system again, but they expect everyone to go through that tunnel. So I'm being sprayed multiple times with this disinfectant. So, the hope is that it is safe. Speaking of safety, Dan Chatka writes, Doug, please drive with both hands on the handlebars all the time, especially when filming videos. You might be distracted while filming and miss one of Thailand's surprising road obstacles. Yeah, I've gotten that comment before because as I'm talking on the GoPro, as I'm riding, I just instinctively talk with my hands or I might, you know, turn off the GoPro or fiddle with the microphone or do something. So I'll just be holding on with one hand and one hand off the handlebars sometimes. I talk a lot with my hands, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, is that really, really dangerous or not? I mean, obviously you should keep both hands on the handlebars as much as possible. But uh, yeah, my hand instinctively comes off from time to time. So uh, yeah, if that moment when your hand is off the handlebars, if at that moment I hit a rock or a deep pothole, then yeah, I mean, it could jerk the handlebars and could go flying, but uh, I try to be as careful as I can. Um, I only get my hand off when it's a clear open road ahead of me and I kind of know what's going on. Daniel Boucher again. 
Good morning, Doug. Thanks for sharing this great video. Have a great day and uh, be safe. Thank you, Daniel. Um, yeah, I enjoyed making the video. This is the road trip video coming from uh, Mesot. I didn't do a whole lot of vlogging on that trip just because yeah, I just wasn't in the mood and because everything was closed, I couldn't really stop anywhere. So I basically just kept driving or riding, I guess you say with a scooter. I just kept riding and riding and riding and stopped occasionally, but basically just rode my scooter the whole time. So I didn't, uh, I didn't end up with my usual hour long travel vlog. It's like 30 minutes, which is uh, short for me. Roy Goad writes, well, I'm getting my first jab here in uh, Pattaya. Pattaya? Pattaya. Today at Bangkok Pattaya Hospital. It's free. They have a website where any foreigner can register if you're over 60 years old and will be offered to under 60s from next week. I believe you can travel between provinces if you get a QR code from the hotel you're going to stay in. Some YouTubers are doing this with success. Some breaking news that if the cases continue to reduce in numbers, they may relax some of the restrictions in a week or two. Yeah, that's good news. I saw an article about that, that actually the numbers were starting to come down. People were starting to feel a bit more optimistic. So maybe at the end of August, the worst of the restrictions might start to be lifted. But of course, we've all uh, thought that uh, in the past. But there is a bit of a, uh, I think there is some confusion around this idea where they, someone might say any foreigner can register. But when you look into it, it's not any foreigner. It's actually any foreigner that is a permanent resident can register. I can't. So the program that he, that he took advantage of to get uh, the vaccination, um, that would be because he is a permanent resident of Thailand. I wouldn't be able to sign up for that program because I'm still technically a tourist. Nay writes, looking good and fresh with that clean haircut. But I've always wondered, what would you look like with a full beard today? Yeah, the beard is an interesting question because there was a period of a number of years in my life when I did have a beard, like a full beard. And to my surprise, it grew in reddish. So I actually had a reddish beard back then in my, in my youth. And most places where I went in the world, people said that I looked like uh, Chuck Norris. You know, people always pick a movie star or a singer that you look like. And for me, everyone picked uh, Chuck Norris. You know, says, oh, you look exactly like Chuck Norris. And if I squint my eyes and look at my own picture, it's like, yeah, I can just, just kind of see it. But Chuck Norris is a lot more famous than you might believe in places like South America. I couldn't believe it. Um, yeah, Chuck Norris photo, like posters and, and pictures were everywhere. Vans, like uh, local buses carrying, you know, transportation, people from city to city had big Chuck Norris posters on them. And I would get on this bus and they're like, hey, it's Chuck Norris. Now though, you know, I'm in my 50s now and I don't know, white beard by this point? Like if I grew out my beard, would it grow in white now? Would I have a gray beard? Would I look like, you know, Santa Claus now? <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready to face that because, I mean, I don't obsess a lot about age. You know, time goes by, there's nothing we can do about it. So there's no point uh, stressing out. So I don't think about my age a great deal, but I think psychologically, it might be a bit of a shock even for me if I decided to just grow out my beard and it came in full white. It's just like, okay, that's weird. You know, when did you become a grandfather, Doug? So maybe I'm, maybe I'm reluctant to grow a beard now because I don't want to see that, you know? Who knows? Maybe if I, end up being able to travel again and you're away from, you know, hot water and razors for a while, you know, your beard just grows in because you're not uh, staying in places with nice bathrooms, then maybe a beard would start to grow in. But um, yeah, if it grew in white, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how I would uh, feel about that. Thane Zan writes, Doug, have you, ever have you ever visited Magnetic Hill near Mesot in Tak? 
I'd like to see your video of how you test Magic Road in your scooter. Have a pleasant day. Uh, man after my own heart, have you ever visited? Nice use of the present perfect tense. I'm a big fan as an English teacher of the present perfect, the f my favorite English verb tense. Um, yeah, actually I rode past the magnetic hill once or twice. I rode on that highway going towards a national park where there's a huge tree that you can visit. And along the way, they have a magnetic hill where because of the perspective of the hills in the road, it feels like you're going up when in fact you're going down. So even if you turn off your engine on your scooter, you still keep rolling. So it feels like you're rolling uphill. So it's like a you know, magnetic hill kind of pulling you up. And when I rode past it, I kind of slowed down and, and I saw the signs for the magnetic hill and I kind of kind of tr tried to gauge the perspective, but it didn't seem that dramatic to me. It's like, it just didn't feel like I was facing uphill at all. It still felt like I was going downhill. I don't know. So I, I wasn't even sure that I saw the magnetic hill, to be honest, because the, the perspective distortion didn't seem that extreme to me. Because I've seen one of the, I've, every country has these, and I've seen them before. And in other places, um, they um, were much more dramatic. You can really see the difference. You know? Eve Glasner writes, uh, information, I got the Johnson vaccine with, through the French embassy. Maybe Canada is doing the same. And then he goes, says, when you ask something, you rarely get an usable answer and every day it's different. This is the Thai style. Yeah, I think the French embassy is the, it's the only embassy I've heard of that is getting vaccines for their citizens. The Canadian government and the Canadian embassy system is not doing that. So as far as I'm aware, the Canadian embassy is not organizing the vaccine for Canadian citizens. And as far as I'm aware, they have no uh, intention of doing so. So I'm, I have to take care of that uh, privately at some point. Oh yeah, in the second part of his comment, I was, uh, I think, talking about my landlady telling me about this vaccination clinic in Mesot, which turned out she was so definite about when it was and where it was. She was very clear. She saw it on TV. She had the dates. She had everything. And yet when I went there, there was nothing there and nobody knew anything about it. So I just, that happens to me a lot where people tell me things with absolute certainty. This is the way it is. And then it turns out it's not that way at all. And I never quite, uh, never quite know why. Oh, brand new comment showed up uh, 37 uh, seconds ago. Oh, might be a safety comment. Hi, Doug. This is from Jamie. Hi, Doug. Just want to say that I appreciate your refreshing and enjoyable way of narrating. I'm a fellow Canadian and usually a relatively frequent traveler to Chiang Mai. I share your joy of being a motorbike explorer. Thanks for making and sharing tour videos. Keep yourself safe. I recommend that you find a decent pair of gloves it is, it is, as it is almost certain that a slip or tumble while scootering will happen. Peace. Yeah, I definitely take that comment to heart because, um, yeah, I mean, road rash, right? If you do lay down your scooter or a motorbike or you crash and you go flying and you hit the pavement with your hands or your legs or elbows, knees, whatever, you're sliding along the pavement, you tear up your skin pretty badly and um, even if you don't go to the extreme of getting a full-on, you know, crash suit that uh, high-speed motorcycle riders put on, a good pair of gloves would probably go a long way towards at least protecting your hands. I just, uh, yeah, again, never, uh, never got around to it. And um, I do tend to ride like an old grandmother. I ride really slowly. Maybe it doesn't look like it on the video, but if you see the video of me riding, and if you see anything passing by me, another scooter or a motorcycle or a car or a truck, you can see, you know, they're whipping by me. They're going at normal speed. 
I actually ride really slowly. And again, it may not look like it because I'm doing the video thing and my hand may come off the handlebar, but I'm, I feel like I'm hyper aware of the road ahead of me. Um, I'm, I don't know, I'm a very careful driver. I don't go around curves at speed if it's wet roads, you know, and, and I'm not out riding in the dark. I, I don't take any chances at all. So I guess I, I, I feel like I have some defensive driving habits, which um, will help me stay out of any trouble or prevent accidents, but probably a good pair of gloves would be a, wouldn't be a bad idea at all. So those are all the comments on that video. Oh, and there's, yeah, one more video. This is the um, rainy season in Umpang, 30 minutes in 4K. I did the five minute video in 5K of this pond, and then it started raining. So then I ran out there again just to capture some of the rain, and I ended up filming for uh, 30 minutes. Let's get these in order. So I can start at the very beginning. Chin Ji Sheng Mo, the English uh, appreciator, writes, I like rain sound. So do I. I uh, yeah, I love the sound of uh, rain. So I actually filmed another video about 15 minutes long of just a rainstorm. Um, I shot it basically right from here, right from the, uh, the balcony. A really heavy rain started and I came out and set up the GoPro just to capture some of it. I guess I'm all about uh, <laughs> National Geographic video all of a sudden. Thien Huat writes, cannot change the quality of this video in settings, can only get 360p or auto. Yeah, I had the same experience with this um, video. Let's see if it's still like that. I know that um, YouTube updated their app recently and they changed how you access settings, like in terms of choosing the quality of the resolution, the playback resolution, 1080p or uh, QHD or 4K, whatever. They changed how you access it. But on this video, it's a 4K video, but when I tried to change the quality, yeah, I get a message that says quality unavailable. And I don't know why. So for me, it is, play, it is playing back at yeah, 480p, which is weird because it's a 4K video. Mm, I did notice that when I uploaded this video, it took a long time, like a long, long time. It took hours to finish uploading, which was kind of weird. So maybe that's something that went wrong in the upload. So maybe I'll just uh, upload it again when, uh, when, when, uh, when Wi-Fi uh, comes back. And there are some replies to this comment. Yeah, because I wrote back and said, same thing for me. I can't uh, choose the quality on this video. I can on all the other videos, but not on this one. And Andy Tan asks, how you do this, Doug? Set up the tripod under umbrella and you read a book? Yeah, good question, because it was pouring rain. But the GoPro Hero 9, if you use the battery door that comes with the GoPro, it's fully waterproof. So I didn't have to worry about, I didn't have a microphone attached to it. So I just put the GoPro next to the pond out in the pouring rain and just let it, uh, let it rain all over the GoPro. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it gets wet because it's a waterproof. And um, there was a building right beside it with kind of an overhanging roof. And I just sat down underneath the roof and I just sat there and uh, thought my thoughts while I watched uh, the rain and listened to the rain and uh, let the GoPro do its thing. It was really nice. It was almost, I'm not a meditating yoga kind of guy. That's not my thing. But it was really nice just to sit out there in the rain and have nothing to do but watch the GoPro record the rain and just sit there and uh, relax. It's really nice, really enjoyed it. Let's see, uh, Kitten as Trophy writes, AI may categorize this clip as a still photo combined with sound. 
No need for fast speed. Motion picture may escape this algorithm. I'm not sure what he means by that because this is not filmed in high speed. That's just, that's just a normal video. Um, I didn't do a time lapse for this one at all. I just shot it at a regular speed, just in high resolution. So I guess he's saying that I don't need to do high speed video for this. And in fact, I didn't. Yeah, it was just, I just put it the camera on a tripod and let it record in uh, normal speed. Wasif Jalal says, Planet Doug, like the name change. Yeah, I haven't talked about that a lot since I did change the name of the channel from The Cycling Canadian to Planet Doug. I think changing the name was pretty, the reasons why would be pretty obvious. I'm not cycling anymore. I don't know if I will ever go cycling again with the world the way it is. So The Cycling Canadian doesn't make any sense. In fact, since I started the YouTube channel, I've never gone on a bike tour. So the channel has been called The Cycling Canadian right from the beginning, yet I've never actually posted a, not even one cycling video. So it was time to get rid of that name. And uh, Planet Doug just seemed like a nice catch-all phrase, name that covers everything. So if I post a video about any random subject, nobody can say, hey, that subject doesn't fit your YouTube channel. So, well, everything, you know, anything that happens in my life, in, in the world of Doug, is fair game from a video, you know, like Planet Doug, that includes everything. So uh, it's kind of a nice, broad kind of name. Anyway, I like the name for a lot of reasons. I wrote about that a lot when I announced uh, the name change in the uh, community tab. All my thoughts about the name, I wrote them out there. <laughs> Blackthorn says, great for my tinnitus. So I guess you get the uh, sound of the rain. And uh, Sam S., I was kind of hoping for various locations and angles when it said rainy morning scenery in 4K. Didn't expect to see the same pond and the two coconut trees for 30 minutes. It's like watching paint dry, LOL. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, comment, uh, criticism uh, taken. This is like a new thing for me to do, kind of experimental and... Um, yeah, just playing around with different things. And in this case, just working out the kinks. So I put the GoPro in one place and just filmed the rain for 30 minutes. And I was thinking, you know, it would be nice to um, move the camera around from spot to spot, capture different scenes, you know, different angles, different perspectives, even pick up the camera and ride to a new place and capture you know, the rain in different locations, and I could do that in the future, but these are the very uh, first videos in this style that I've attempted. And uh, right now, just the learning curve in terms of the technology, like, like I said, 5K means the GoPro overheats and shuts down, and I can't even edit it, so I learned that. Just sort of figuring out how to make these videos at all, how to record audio, um, how to plug in microphones, how to do this, you know, it takes a while. So I could, if I keep doing videos like this, I could make them much uh, fancier in the future. But at the same time, not to get too deep into this, um, going into the weeds here, but when I had the idea to make videos like this, one thing I was thinking was just keep it simple. Like, don't get crazy, make it so super complicated that it takes hours and hours to edit and you get so frustrated and, and, and takes all day to do. I just thought, hey, just for fun, just plop the camera down beside a beautiful pond, film it for 30 minutes, one file, upload that one file, you're done. No fancy graphics, no editing, no this, no that, nothing that takes hours and hours. And I was thinking if someone wants to watch it, they can watch it. And if they don't, you know, it's YouTube, right? You don't have to. Um, but I was thinking that this type of video was appealing to me because 
you could do it so simply. I mean, maybe I'm riding my scooter around shooting a vlog where I'm talking a lot and then going to a lot of different places and I just happen to see a beautiful valley with something happening and while I'm sitting there, just plop down the camera, record 30 minutes of that scene with the camera static and then, uh, yeah, just upload that as an extra um, feature, you know, just uh, an extra little video tidbit that someone somewhere uh, might enjoy or even just for me, to be honest, because, um, yeah, I'm recording my life at the same time, things that I'm seeing, and I like uh, rec keeping a record of, uh, you know, the things that I'm seeing and the things that I'm experiencing. And I think that is it for the uh, comments. One other thing about Sam, uh, Sam S.'s comment about how it would be better to have a variety of scenes. This morning, I did go to this river, as I mentioned long ago in this video, and I was filming basically just flowing water in this river. And as I was sitting there filming with one camera, it occurred to me this idea of maybe filming different perspectives. And I happened to have three cameras with me. I had, you know, the GoPro Hero 9, the GoPro Hero 7, and the Panasonic LX10. So I thought, well, I'm sitting here anyway. Why don't I set up all three cameras? So I put all three cameras filming the same river, but from different angles, different perspectives. And I started moving the GoPro around, you know, capturing different angles, shooting some of it in 1080p, some in 4K, some with uh, ambient sound just through the GoPro mics, some with a shotgun mic, some with the Rode video, uh, the Rode Wireless Go mic. So trying out all these different techniques just to see what looks best, what sounds best. So maybe I'll be able to take all that footage and then combine it to make a little bit more uh, interesting video that will not, as uh, Sam put it, be like, yeah, watching a uh, paint dry. But then again, doing all that, I would take hours and hours and hours to do. It would be hours of work for, you know, a thousand people that may watch it for a few seconds at a time. You know, it's a lot of work for not much benefit. We'll see. We'll just see how this little project uh, goes in the future. <laughs> anyway, that's it for uh, comments for this afternoon. And uh, once I get uh, Wi-Fi back, I'll uh, put this video together and upload it to uh, YouTube. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>